Hey, and I want to thank you for joining us again here today at the Chimney and Fireplace Success Network. This is sponsored by CVC Coaching, and my name is Jerry Eisenhower. And what we do every single week is we try to find someone to put on this with us so we can come out and share some knowledge with you. That's what it's all about. Our whole mission here is to give you ways that you can drive your business to those levels. You know, one of our taglines is, we help you take your business dreams and turn them into your business realities. So today I got a really special guest. And I want to tell you just a little bit about this guy. I only met him a few short months ago. And what it was, I went to a training and he was one of the people and one of the presenters there. It was him, Randy Pennington, and excuse me, Randy Pennington and Larry Winget. But what I heard was this voice come out, and it's like this guy was given a gift from God in his voice. But what I also heard, which was more important than that was, was the message that this guy delivered. Now, his name is Scott McCain. And if you've been in the National Chimney Sweep Guild for a lot of years, in 1987, Scott McCain was a keynote speaker. We were in Louisville, Kentucky, and I remember going to that convention because we had traveled through the snow to get there. So that was in 1987. And then years later, I got to know this guy. And at this point, I consider him one of my mentors, one of my coaches. I'm in one of his programs. So with that, I want to introduce you to today a guy by the name of Scott McCain, and his specialty is what we call distinction. So, Scott, are you out there with me today, brother? You bet, Jerry. Man, what an introduction. I, I, I really appreciate that. It's great to be with you. Thank you so much. Well, I got to pump you up, Scott, because that way, since you're doing this for free, I got to get you pumped up, man. If I got you pumped up, we can give that value. There you go. Well, I, I'm, I'm chomping at the bit, man. Let's, let's rock. This That's is great. Rock. So, anyway, <laughs> here we are. So, Scott, you know, what you've taught me and what I've heard and what you are an expert in and I do mean expert, and you're recognized by this by many of your colleagues, is you're an expert in, in the world of making your business one of distinction. In fact, even more than that, you go deeper and talk to people and explain to them how they need to go after their niche in their marketplace, how they're going to do this, how they're going to build this world of distinction. Well, here's my first question to you. We are talking to blue collar workers, Scott. A lot of these people were chimney suites, were chimney service, were vending technicians, may own retail stores, clean air ducts, dry vents, all kinds of different things. Well, those are often viewed as lovely jobs, maybe by other people. So here's the challenge. What does Scott McCain share with these people that they're gonna take their chimney service business, their chimney suite business, a, a, a field that has a great history how do they make themselves distinctive in their local market, Scott? Well, Jerry, that, that that's a important question, and and let me tell you a little bit about where I come from on this. Uh, I grew up in a very small town, rural Indiana. My my mom and dad owned the one grocery store in Crothersville, Indiana, my hometown. Uh, very blue collar. I mean, the folks there either farmed or they worked uh, building Cummins engines up the road in Columbus, Indiana. And I, I grew up stocking shelves and waiting on customers and cutting meat and 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 doing the the work that you would imagine that somebody would do uh, when their family has a small business. And 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 part of what I love about the audience that you talk to is that they're all in. I mean, all of our chips are on the table in that little store. And and just like the people that you deal with and that you talk to, man, the 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 chips are all on the table. That they, they're all in with with their business. And so. One of the challenges, I think, when you have a business like that is that you're attracted to the business because you know the work. My dad was a butcher and he had the chance to buy the store. Um, you know, he, he, he knew about cutting meat. He didn't he had to learn about how do you stand out and how do you take care of customers? Uh, a lot of times I, I, I suggest in any blue collar business, we know the work, but this other customer stuff and this other standing out stuff, that's that's something we've got to learn. And, and so that's part of my mission is to help people learn that and try to teach that and help people grow with that. So at the end of the day, what it's about is why would they choose you instead of another chimney sweep? Why would they choose you to service their fireplace as opposed to all the other competitors out there? And so what we have to do is to find something that makes us compelling, a reason above and beyond just that we're the cheapest, right? I mean, if the customer sees no difference between you and, the, and any other competitors, 
then it makes sense for them to, to, to buy the cheapest, right? If there's no difference, why wouldn't I buy the cheapest? So what we have to do is to find ways to distinguish what we do and create distinction in what we do in something other than just being the low cost provider. Got you covered, you know, and that goes back, you know, when I first entered coaching, one of the first certifications I got was studying under Jeffrey Gittimer. And one of the yeah. things that Jeffrey shared with me during this term is selling is a three-stage fold, three-stage process. The first thing is always to sell yourself. The second is to sell the company. And the third is to sell the product. And the thinking there was, I can buy your product anywhere but I can only buy you from you. So is that part of what you're saying by making it a distinctive business, Scott? It sure is, Jerry. And part of this too is, you know, in many cases, I know, I know there are business um, uh, customers as well, corporate customers, business customers of, of your audience, but a lot of times it's, it's coming in their homes. And so therefore it's really hard to let somebody in my home that I don't trust or somebody in my home that I don't have a, some kind of connection with that that makes me want to welcome them not only in to do a job but to welcome them into my home or even into my workplace so that that whole idea of i'm buying from you and therefore i have to trust you is is really an essential part of this okay so scott let me ask you this you know in preparation just so you know in preparation and anticipation of you being on today i've let some other people set the stage for you some of these people like larry winget randy pennington and damian mason and tom ziegler so and they've all been here to set the stage for you today scott but we've <laughs> talked a lot about reinvention so you also speak on that and you know that's some of the things that we discuss in our coaching group so what has yeah. a person got to do to reinvent themselves, to build a higher demand for what they do that customers are coming after them? Because we all know, Scott, and this is for all of us, it's tougher to do business today. Customers want it. I believe Randy's the one that says this, but they want it better. They want it faster. They want it cheaper and they want it friendlier. Is that part of the distinction building, Scott? You know, Jerry, one, one of the things, and, and, and let me take that last part first, uh, I think the behavior rewarded is behavior repeated. So the behavior that we reward is the behavior we're going to get more of. That works for our employees in terms of how we reward them and what we reward them for. But I think it also works in terms of customers. And and here's here's part of the challenge. No good deed goes unpunished. So by taking such great care of your customers, Part of what you have to anticipate is they're going to elevate their expectations. And I think Randy's exactly right. And, and so complaining about it isn't going to do any good. And, and hoping it's going to change isn't going to do any good. Because the fact of the matter is when we are the customer, we expect more of the places where we do business. So our customers do the same with us. For me in the reinvention aspect, uh, what I found is that most of us reinvent when we have to. And it would sure be great if we would do it before that becomes the case. Uh, for me in my business, I, unfortunately, I lost my first wife to cancer. And it took me out of the marketplace for a while. And when I was coming back in the marketplace uh, of, of, of my particular world, it was really hard to get back in. And I, I started trying to, to research and to study how I could make my little business stand out so I could make a living again. And had it not been for that tragic event in my life, I would never have begun the study of what it takes to create distinction. Uh, call it the blinding flash, the obvious, but somewhere along the way, after I realized that it was important to my small business, I realized there might be other businesses that would like to learn this too. So I, I researched for a number of years and wrote about it, and, and, and that's the basis of the books, my speeches, and everything else as a result of that research. I, I know that we in our little grocery store in Crothersville, we had, we had a lot of success, but things really kicked into gear when a supermarket moved down the street. So my hope for the folks listening here is that you choose to create distinction and reinvent yourself, not because you're faced with a challenging situation in your life or a challenging situation in your business, but because you realize it's just the smart thing to do. So the first step to creating distinction, I, I call them the four cornerstones. The first of the four cornerstones is clarity. In other words, most small businesses try to be all things to all people. And, and in doing that, we create our own set of challenges. And that is, you know, it's the old cliche about being a jack of all trades and the master of none. Well, it, it works not only with a trade, it works with how you run your business. If you try to be all things to all people, then it's hard to be number one with anybody. 
And so part of what I encourage smaller businesses to do is to really get focused on what you do, how you do it, what could you do that's unique and distinctive. Uh, I was talking to a friend the other day, was telling me about an uh, uh, orthodontist that he works with. And the orthodontist limited his practice to just four procedures. Of all of the hundred procedures that an orthodontist could do, this guy decided to just do four. Turned out he received an award for being one of the most profitable orthodontists in America because he became the go-to provider for those four treatments. And, and I, I think we can learn from that. It's hard in small business to say no to any customer. It's hard for us to ever turn down business. I get that. It's hard for me to this day to say no to anybody. But yet, it's part of what we have to do. If we're not clear about what we're not, then we aren't really clear about what we are. You know, Scott, you touched on something a while ago, and one of the factors in my life, and it and it's in your life too, is often it takes chaos because what you went through with your first wife, that was personal chaos. I went through my personal chaos in 2010, and we go through this, and the hard thing in life is the chaos forces us to do these things. I'm sure that after you went through your personal chaos, the chaos forced you. And you talked about your business. The same thing. It totally changed everything I did in my life. Okay. Yeah. So at this point, I consider the people that have the foresight to be able to see what's coming down the road and can make the changes they need to without facing the chaos. Those are the people that are going to move ahead. But that takes being able to look into that crystal ball. Would you expand on that? I mean, are you in agreement with what I said? Oh, totally, Jerry. And, and you know, this works in big business, too. I mean, isn't it interesting that what disrupted the cell phone business didn't come from Nokia or Motorola or Sony Ericsson, the people that were in cell phones 24-7, Apple's who disrupted it, and they weren't even in the business to begin with. Folgers and Chase and Sanborn were making coffee 24-7 for decades, and then Starbucks comes along and makes a difference. And And... It, I think we have to understand in small business, it, it's not our, you know, not maybe our fault if something like that happens, but it can put us out of business just as surely as the iPhone put Nokia out of business. So we, we have to be willing to look at that. We have to be willing to accept it. Uh, Dr. Clayton Christensen of Harvard talks about the innovator's dilemma. And it's that in many, many cases, we're so invested in what we're already doing. Even if we see these trends coming, we don't want to pull the trigger and, and, and do the disruptive thing that it takes to really take our business to the next level. So that's, that's why I'm suggesting that the first cornerstone of distinction is clarity. It is, it is looking at what we're doing, refining what we're doing, being precise about what we're doing. You know, Jerry, you can't differentiate a generic. And if you're exactly like every other chimney sweep, if you're like every other repair place, if you're like every other service place in your community, why would a customer pick you? You cannot differentiate a generic, but here's the other thing. You can't differentiate what you can't define. If you can't tell me what makes you better, what makes you superior, if you can't give me a reason to choose you, then why would I pick you? And you know, Scott, that's dead on because y'all did it. You and Randy and Larry did this morning an idea shots and it was about value and value statements. And it's those type things that just looking because that inspired thought processes in me of how do you get this value out and how do you make sure that you're living the value that you're preaching and those kind of things. But, you know, it was real interesting when you said about narrowing down to the four things, you know, that was the basis of the McDonald brothers before Ray Kroc came along. They narrowed down that they did four things well. They did four things. They did hamburgers, french fries, soft drinks, and milkshakes. And by God, Ray Kroc got rich because they ordered some milkshake mixers from him. And he saw something there and was able to take it to something that feeds a large percentage of the world's population every single day today. It's, you know, it's unreal when you look at this. But here's my question to you also. We're dealing with the world of chimney sweeping. It is a world that is not recognized by enough consumers. It is a world that can lower the emissions into our environment. It's a way we're going to lower, the consumer can lower the heating cost of their home. It's a way they're going to improve their air quality. So what does a chimney sweep service 
the chimney mafia, as you guys like to call us. What does the chimney sweep industry in America do to make American consumers aware of the value they provide and to do it in a distinctive way, Scott? Uh, Jerry, that is a fabulous question, and and it's it's one that I think there are a number of really great answers for. If someone said to me, as you did, you know, what would you do? I, I would really start marketing. How would you like to help the environment and save a lot of money at the same time? Uh, how how would you like? Uh, let me rephrase that. Even how how would you like to, with low cost and no effort, save money and help the environment? Because when you think about when, when the environmentalists want us to reduce emissions and to you know be cleaner, usually there's an expense involved in that. The price of cars go up, or we have to you know recycle and, and put things in a different bag. You folks have a way of making that happen by just showing up. And you have a way of, of I think most people, I, I, I don't know. I mean, this is just my impression as a customer, as a client. I think most of us, until what you just said is explained to us, I think most customers look at it as a function of safety. I don't want my house to catch on fire. Now, don't get me wrong. That's that's a heck of a thing. That's, that's super important. But those other advantages that you just told me, I don't know how many customers really know that. See, part of what happens is we get so busy talking to ourselves, we assume the customer gets what's important to us by osmosis, you know, they're just going to absorb it. Surely they know that. I, I don't think customers know that. You know, when, when people worry, <laughs> you heard the old saying, you know, I, I used to worry what people thought about me. Now I realize they don't think about me. <laughs> I think that's part of what happens is we don't realize that customers aren't thinking about us enough. And because of that, they don't realize all the benefits that we assume and presume that they're, that they're understanding. And, you know, you have to tell people more than once. This yes. is often what I tell people, one of the things I learn in coaching. When I go through my coaching training, I got to say it more than one time. And I got to say it in a different way. It may just take a little change of the wording. But we got to keep that message out there and going. Okay. So, Scott, let me ask you this. What I'd like to know is, tell me a book you would recommend that people would read. Because it's my belief that in order to be successful in business and in life, it requires three main functions. And that's going to be leadership, it's going to be culture, and it's going to be the systems. And we all live by systems. When we look at it, we get out of bed the same way every morning. We put our pants on the same way. We put the same shoe on first, same foot, all that. We are, Our lives are systematized whether we like it or not. So if you could share, because in my belief, readers are leaders. Tell me what you could recommend of any book out there of what people should read. And I'd also like to know which of your books you recommend as the best one for people to know about Scott McCain. Well, I appreciate that very much, Jerry. I, I, at the risk of being very biased uh, with friends, uh, the, the ones that I'm sure that uh, the people that you had here on this program talk about Larry Wingate's books about, you know, it's called Work for a Reason is a real great insight into not only for employees, but for leaders of employees as well. Randy's results rule is really terrific. But but there's one that's really that, that's recent that's really on the top of my list. And that's from my pal Joe Calloway. And it's just keep it simple. And it really cuts to the heart of too many times we overcomplicate things. We, we make it harder than it needs to be. And by keeping it simple, it it really gets to the things that matter most. One of Joe's great comments is be the best at what matters most. By the way, that's another book that he has that I recommend. Be the best at what matters most. And so when we look at what really matters most to our customers, if we can be the best at doing that, we really have a leg up. So I'd recommend Callaway's Keep It Simple as, as one of the top ones. It's a quick read. And it's also something you might want to give to to other people in your business as well, because it's one of those gift type books that that they can read in, 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 in just a short period of time. You ask about mine, and uh, I've, I've got a couple that I'd recommend. One is uh, Create Distinction, which is really the, the founding book of, of everything I talk about. It's, it's what to do when great isn't good enough to grow your business. Uh, the, the conductor of the Los Angeles Philharmonic said a few months ago, 
virtuosos are a dime a dozen. When they asked him, were there problems hiring virtuosos to play in his orchestra? He said, virtuosos are a dime a dozen. There's so many talented organizations out there, so many talented people that doing things right is not good enough. You have to be the best. And that comes in being the best, not only in, in the technical aspect of, of what you do as a chimney sweep, but also in terms of how you take care of your customers. And so what Create Distinction does is really it's a, it's a, it's a workbook in a sense about what you need to do to walk through the process and, and, and really stand out from your competition. The other book I, I, I did that I think would have some value is called What Customers Really Want. We surveyed over a thousand customers. We asked them two basic questions, Jerry. We said, what do you want from the places where you're doing business? And what are you getting in the places where you're doing business? And what we found is there were the, the six basic disconnections between small businesses and the customers that they're serving. And so what this book does is talk about how do you bridge those gaps between what your customer really wants and what you're typically offering to them. Man, that's great stuff, Scott. It really, really is. And I got a deep probing question for you, okay? And All right. Okay, All right. you know, hey, that's what you know. Hey, Scott, I ask a lot of questions, and I make you think, right? I love it. Okay, so I want you to reach deep in the Scott McCain mind. I want you to go deep down in your heart with this, Scott. And I want you to give me what your voice of encouragement, your word of inspiration would be to people. Because often we got chaos nipping in our doors. You and I both spoke in this podcast about chaos that hit us in our personal lives and how we had to change. And Scott, I wish I could say, I know how you feel and losing your first wife. I don't. I've never been through that. So if I said that, I can't because I haven't been there. You know my wife. I don't know how I would go through that. But I know right now that if I had to face that, Scott, I'd be in touch with you, okay? So yeah. when the chips are down, and it's, but it's going to break down to all you. You know, one of the things that Zig Ziglar said, he talked about being, you know, born to win. But he also said, you're not just born to win. You got to prepare to win. And you have to expect to win. And you have to work to win. It's not that you have this born. And none of us are born with that. So tell me, how would you inspire someone? that the chips are down. Maybe the wolves are at the door. Maybe they're facing sadness. Maybe something's going on. Scott, what would be your voice of encouragement that if you believe in yourself strong enough that you can weather any storm? I'm sure there was a time you wonder, can I weather this storm? But you did and you've done an excellent job. So tell me from Scott McCain, what's your advice to the people when they're at the, the wolves are at the door? You know, Jerry, one of the things that I learned through what I, I went through are the uh, two things. Um, one is the value of relationships. And the second is that appreciation is the foundation for growth. Uh, what we appreciate is what we cultivate in our lives, just like a farmer would cultivate the crops. And I think sometimes when the wolf is at our door, we get so caught up in our problems that we fail to take the time to appreciate the things that we have, even when things are tough. Um, just, just a couple quick stories. Um, the value relationships. When, when I was first starting out in the business, I, I was speaking at a youth convention and, um, get, my wife went with me to Kansas city for the program and we check in the hotel. And I, I was so excited to be there because the speaker, the, the, at another session, not on the session I was on, but another session was Zig Ziglar. And, you know, I'd, I'd had all these books and listened to all of his audios and watched the videos, but I'd, I'd never seen him in person. And I was so excited about this. And we get to the hotel check-in and there's a note at the front desk and it said, uh, please call Mr. Ziegler's room. And it had the number. So I call the room and Zig answers the phone and he wanted to know if Sherry and I would like to go to dinner with him that night. Well, I felt like a little league shortstop and Derek Jeter has just said, you want to you know, get a Coke. So we went to dinner that night with Zig and had a great conversation. And what, what an extraordinary person that, that Zig was. And years later, after Sherry passed away, um, about a month after I go to the mailbox, and there's a box there from Ziegler Corporation. And Jerry, honest to goodness, I thought somebody had sent me a nice book or sent me a gift, you know, in sympathy, that kind of thing. And I opened the box and there was a handwritten letter, eight pages, you know, four front and back from Zig. And I didn't realize that he and his wife, the redhead, had lost one of their children, um, tragically. 
And he wrote this letter about, you know, how he remembered that dinner and it was just of encouragement. And it was just of, you know, when you're, you know, when you're in times of trouble, you know, read and focus and, and connect with your friends. And, and it was just the best advice that could have, could have possibly gotten. Now, look, part of the reason I, I mentioned that is because I was not close with Zig Ziglar. I, I was not on his speed dial. Uh, we, we were not close friends. He was an acquaintance. We were not, I'm not trying to name drop because we were not close friends. But the reason I bring that up is this good grief. We all talk about how busy we are. I can't imagine anybody who's busier than Zig Ziglar, but he still found time. He made time. And, and when I started telling that story and I shared it with Tom Ziglar, uh, when I started telling that story, I found so many other people that had the same story that he had made time to build relationships. And so the, the strength of your business is going to be judged in part by the depth of your relationships. The, the relationships you have with your customers, the relationships you have with friends, the relationships you have with other small business people in the community. And that leads into the second point about appreciation is the foundation of growth. When, when my wife died, I realized I could do one of two things. I could either be devastated constantly because of how unfair it was that she was taken, or I could celebrate that at least we had the years together we had. And that was one of the biggest decisions of my life. And I decided, uh, through her encouragement, by the way, before before she uh, departed, uh, I, I decided I'm going to focus on the appreciation of what we had and, and, and not focus on what I lost. And that made me a healthier person and a better person to enter another relationship with later on and to rebuild my business. So if, if the wolves are at your door right now, I want to encourage you to do two things that seem a little bit strange. Usually when the wolf's at the door, we want to pull the covers over our head and we want to ignore it. And we don't want to talk to anybody or tell anybody. I want to encourage you to do the opposite. I want to encourage you to, to get coaching, to get advice, to, to, to read the best books and connect, to, to invest in yourself and invest in your education. Benjamin Franklin said, the investment that always pays the highest dividend is knowledge. So when you invest in knowledge, it always pays the highest dividend. So invest in coaching, invest in yourself, invest in growing, invest in ways, even when the wolf's at the door, that's when you need it the most to, to expand your business. But the second is, even when times are tough, man, that's that's especially the time that, that you know, we, we, we sang at our little Methodist church in Crothersville, Indiana, count your blessings, name them one by one. And one of the things I did is literally make out a list every day of what I was appreciative of. In the worst days of my life, I would sit down and I would write, I'm appreciative of this. I'm appreciative of that. Because I, I, I don't know why it works, but Jerry, I know that it does work. When we focus on that, we can find better things starting to happen. You know, Scott, you brought up Tom Ziegler and Zig, and I hope you got the chance because last week on the podcast when I had Tom on it, we went through, because a lot of people don't know this, but Zig had developed Alzheimer's. Yeah. And Tom shared some thoughts about what it's like, because that's where Cheryl works. She works with caring for elderly parents. And it's a challenge. And you know what the challenges are and those kind of things. And, you know, it's a great admiration. But on the other side, Scott, you know, it's like, you know, after I was at your conference out in Las Vegas, you know, and I remember this this day, we were sitting in the same restaurant. You got up and came over and just thanked me and Cheryl for helping you guys put that, con you know, getting people to come to your conference. Yeah. And it's the little things like that. I mean, that didn't take a lot of effort on your part, but you didn't have to do it. You got up, you introduced us to your friends, um, your business associates there and all that. And that's the kind of things that really makes a difference. So anyway, Scott, we're going to back out of here in a minute. But before we go, I'd like to ask, is there anything? I've asked you a lot of questions. So I'd like to just turn it, you know, just let you have it for a minute. I've, you know this customer or the people that listen to this podcast. I've shared with you some thoughts that I hope have helped you. So tell me what Scott McCain's parting words are to this group of people, please. You know, Jerry, I, I, I truly do try to walk the talk and I truly do try to, to you know, uh, I, I, I believe this because it, it, it saved my business. 
So I, I would just encourage everybody that's listening to, to make some of the hard choices and do some of the hard work. You know, the, the, a lot of speakers talk about there's, there's two types of pains. There's either going to be the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. And Jerry, I, I know you've experienced both and I certainly have too, right? And, and I, I, I've, I've decided to pick the pain of discipline because uh, it, while it, it's front loading the pain, it's that pain of regret that can, that can get last a long time. So the, the problem I, I see in small business, the problem I see with blue collar is that because the world is changing, we want to keep doing it the way that we've always done it. And it's hard for me in my business. We're changing a lot of things in my business right now because if, if I don't change them, they will change for me, <laughs> not in the way I want. And, and, and I think that's what we all have to, to, to do is that we need to educate ourselves. We need to take the steps. We, we need, here's the other aspect too, Jerry, just one more quick thing. And that is because we're so good at what we do technically, you know, they're great at being a chimney sweep we tend to overlook the importance of the customer experience, right? Uh, uh, Tony Morrison, the writer once wrote that people will forget, you know, the, the, they'll forget how you did what you did, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. And so thinking about the experience that the customer receives, how, how do you sound when you're on the phone? How, how, do you, how do you make that impression? Do you do the right things when you get to their home to make certain that everything is clean and perfect? What is the experience about? Because the experience that the customer receives is the basis of whether or not they're going to refer you to their friends and neighbors. And so if there's anything I'd encourage you to do, the attitude of gratitude that we talked about, the, the importance of, of building relationships that we talked about, the importance of being clear that we talked about. But, but if there's one thing I'd leave you with, it's this. Critically examine the experience that your customer is receiving and, and analyze how you can step that up to create a more powerful, more compelling, what we call the ultimate customer experience, because that can make a significant impact right away on the future of your business. And Scott, I, I hope I'm not going out of line when I say I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here today. I want to thank you for your words of wisdom. I want to thank you for what you shared. But most of all, I call you my coach. I call you a mentor, but I call you a friend. And, and it's most important. And it's most important. Like I said, I know that if I send Scott McCain a message, Scott's going to answer me. He may be kind of busy right now, but I know that he will answer that question and he will get back with me. So Scott McCain is the kind of people that you've got to surround yourself with, guys. I'm going to tell you something. Scott does a every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. He does what he calls a Sunday, down, Sunday, Sunday night sit down. And if you see Scott's going to be appearing and speaking, I can tell you. And recently, you did a you did a presentation for a flooring group, I believe, Scott. Correct? Yeah. Uh -huh. And there was an attendee there that's a friend of mine, and he sent me a note. He said, "I'm here." So and Scott McCain's on. I said, "Well, you go tell Scott McCain." Jerry <laughs> I said, "You know, said to give you some special attention while you're there." I don't know if he came up and told you that or not. I said, "But you catch Scott over the side." But Scott's going to knock your socks off and listen to it. So, Scott, I really, truly, and I mean, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for being here today, sir. Jerry, I appreciate you so much. And I appreciate not only our friendship, but I appreciate the total commitment that you bring. You know, there's a lot of folks that participate, but there's few that are committed. And I appreciate so much the total commitment that you bring to help your followers, your friends, your, your, your colleagues uh, reach the pinnacle of success in their respective businesses. You, you're moving the needle. You're making a difference. And, and I, I appreciate that about you, my friend. Thank you, sir. Now, people call me committed. Sometimes they're talking about other things, too. So, we have <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I want to thank Scott McCain for being here today. Like I said, follow Scott. You can follow him on the Internet, get his books. Get his, and he and Larry Winget, Randy Pennington, they have a group that is called the uh, – tell them about your group, the UBS group. They can participate in on, fire, on uh, Facebook, Scott. Yeah, just go to a check a, a search for uh, UBS Insider. UBS stands for Ultimate Business Summit that we sponsor every uh, year. That's a program that, that Jerry was talking about earlier that, that he attended here in Las Vegas. But uh, just go on Facebook and, and search for UBS Insider. 
uh, it's it's a place for small business, home based business, blue collar business to share some of their ideas and challenges, and and we help out with that. There's absolutely no charge to be a part of that group. We we just look for folks that want to share. Uh, we also do, as I mentioned, have the Ultimate Business Summit once a year here in Las Vegas. Uh, it, it, it's you know, Jerry, you you attended it. I, I I just think it's an incredible event because it allows small business, blue collar business, home based business folks to share their challenges with each other and learn from one another, as well as hopefully, you know, Randy, Larry, and I provide some perspective as well. So we, we'd love to have you come come to our event in Vegas in a year, uh, but but join our Facebook group because uh, that's that's the beginning. That's where you can share some ideas and, and, and learn some things, and there's absolutely no charge for that. It's UBS Insider uh, on, on Facebook. And if you decide to join, just tell them you're a member of the Chimney Mafia. Chimney Mafia. There you go. Right, Scott? <laughs> We welcome you with open arms. That that's the secret password right there, man. That's, that's the secret <laughs> password. You know, when they, they they looked around, the chimney mafia was all over the place and by they left were, arms oh, out there. Man. <laughs> so anyway, this is Jerry Eisenhower, and this is the Chimney and Fireplace Success Network. We present this every single week. We tr we roll out midweek every week, and what we're trying to do is bring you people that can give you words of encouragement, words of advice, business advice, personal advice. But the whole idea is so you can move your needle to a whole new level. This is sponsored by CBC Coaching. And so, you know, what is our what do we do? What is our value? This is our mission. What we do is we want to help you take those business dreams, you know, the ones you had the day you started your business, and we want to help you turn those into your business reality. So give us a call, phone call to get to do us. You know, the great thing about that, we don't even charge for it. Give us a call. Let's talk. I'm waiting to hear from you. Let's set up a conversation. And with that, myself and Scott, we're out of here. And I look forward to seeing you next week here on the Chimney and Fireplace Success Network. And lastly, always know it is an honor and it's a privilege to be able to share our thoughts with you. Have a good week.